Okay. I thought I'd do another quick inspection video today. And please remember, these are not proper system reviews. This is just me looking at a system because I have it out and I want to share it with you. And today I thought I'd look at the Sega D -d -d Saturn. <laughs> I tricked you there, didn't I? Probably not. You read the title. Now, Sega Saturn was released in Japan in 1994 and it followed in America in May 95. Now this was an early release, it was supposed to be released in November 95, but Sega thought, I know, we'll get ahead of PlayStation and we'll release it four months early at an announcement show. And this led to some problems because there wasn't as many games as they wanted for it, the launch titles weren't as good, although we had Virtua Fighter which was pretty darn good. And they released it at 399. And then PlayStation came a few moments later, released their console at 299 on the release date they said they would. And things went a bit downhill from there. Uh, this is a 32 bit system. Uh, it has 3D capabilities. It features uh, a double processor, two Hitachi processors, which made it a bit difficult to develop for, in much the same way that Atari's Jaguar was a little bit difficult and that led to some problems as well. This sold about 10 million units worldwide but was considered a commercial failure. It sold well in Japan to start with but as soon as the N64 came out in 96 things started to go downhill in that region as well. It's got some good graphics though comparable to the PlayStation. It's got VDP1 and VDP2 display processors and it has a little cartridge slot here that you could um, put cartridges in and you could put the memory cartridge in to save your games. And it came in various colours, it came in a grey in Japan and we have the nice black western release here. And I, you, know, you should know that I'm a bit of a Sega fanboy by now, I was always Sega over Nintendo and I stuck with the consoles up until the Dreamcast which was another underrated system. The pads are quite nicely laid out and we've got our six buttons here. We have a start button and we have two shoulder buttons, which is all lovely stuff. On the back, we've got power here. We've got a kind of small DIN style like the Mega Drive 2 had, which connects to your TV. There's also a communication connector there. And in here, so recess, we have access to the battery backup there. So, let's fire the little beauty up and see what she can do. Got some essential games here. The first one I'm going to show you, take Daytona out, is Alien Trilogy. As you can see, these graphics are pretty comparable to the PlayStation version if you played it, and there's such a lot of atmosphere in here. In many ways, this is comparable to the Alien vs Predator on the Jaguar. We've got some pixelated face huggers there. We've got some canisters. Is it quite a good mock up of these ships from the aliens' world? I like to keep this handy for close encounters. Sega Rally Championship. Now, this was a classic Sega game in the arcades, and although we haven't got arcade quality graphics quite yet, the Saturn did an admirable job. You know, this is one of the first games to come close to the arcade experience. Let's try and change my view. There we go. Look at that. It's not bad at all, really. Compared to what we'd known before, this was a revolutionary. You know, it's just a shame that it would soon be followed by the PlayStation and um, Nintendo 64. But, you know, for a few months, Sega held the market in this close to arcade visual experience. Of course, this is the era when we got loads of realistic racing games such as Gran Turismo. We had uh, Virtual, uh, Virtual Racing, uh, Daytona USA, Ridge Racer. And obviously we're in an era of accessories still. So here we have Daytona and the Sega Saturn steering wheel, which is bloody hard to control. Oh my God. Now this game is another classic arcade game, which has, this is a remarkably good port onto the Saturn. It's not the best, but it is another pretty close to arcade experience. And although this steering wheel, you know, 
helped add that realism. This wasn't quite up to the same standard as the arcade steering wheel. It's a bit flimsy, it's a bit awkward having it mounted directly on the tabletop like this, but it's still fun, still enjoyable. Other accessories included the Sega Saturn Virtua Gun, and this is the version with Virtua Cop 2, which was another arcade hit. And inside we have the game itself, the rather hefty gun, which unfortunately can't be used with modern LCD TVs as it needs the luminance of the CRT screen. But it's nice to hold and very similar to the six shooter style arcade weapons. Yep, we can't shoot him, unfortunately. And one of the must-haves for the system is Nights Into Dreams. What made this game better was you could get a 3D pad, like so, which allowed much better control of your character in the three-dimensional space, as I'll show you. Not that I'm representing that very well here, whatsoever. But that was the basic idea. And if you do own a Saturn, this is a great game to have. Takes you to another world. So here is the launch game for the Saturn and the pack-in title for North America. And it's based on Sega's AM2 Sega Model 1 platform. And the Sega Saturn was the ideal showcase for this in the home. And there's something about the bare polygons that makes this game classic and timeless. As soon as you start adding texture maps to games, then things start looking a little dated. Although this does look dated, it is a true reflection of where the 90s was going. Even though 2D fighting games were better, no one wanted to admit that because we wanted the 3D polygons. Because, you know, it was amazing at the time. And we could show off our brand new hardware to our friends. Oh, crazy days. Now this game improved over the first Virtual Fighter in many ways. The first is the texture mapping, which is very noticeable. In the first one we just had basic polygons, and in here we've taken a whole new level of texture and mapping and graphics and backgrounds, and it looks delightful. And this was one of the, the best games available on this system, in my honest and slightly misguided opinion. Damn it. So there we have it, the Sega Saturn, a console which could have been so much more if it wasn't for that blasted Sony PlayStation or Nintendo 64 or the double chips which made it very hard to program for or the early launch date or the high price or a number of factors, but it remains a console which is very dear to my heart. At least it's better than the 32X shambles. Well done, Sega. Full review, coming soon. Well, I say soon, I've got many others to pile through first. It'll be there soon enough. Keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.